Hey everybody, so I think it's about time to go ahead and answer the questions that I was given. Uh, however, I think the first thing I need to do is introduce you to my new traveling companion. Uh, even those who follow me on Facebook haven't yet met him. So let me introduce you. Is Sumo. Sumo is a nine-year-old Pomeranian who uh, was a rescue. Uh, we don't really know his history, but uh, you can see he's he's all shaved. He came to the rescue group that way uh, about a month ago, I think, uh, fully shaved, probably because he was badly matted. He was also very underweight, had no muscle tone. We think he was kept in a crate most of the time. Uh, so hopefully his hair will grow back, but frankly, even if it doesn't, I don't care. Uh, he is a very sweet, very affectionate uh, little puppy. I say puppy, but he's nine years old. He's not a puppy. Uh, Pomeranians live anywhere from 12 to 15 years on average. So I may only have him for a handful more years, but uh, I'm okay with that. And as you can see, he loves to be held. Uh, I've only had him for a couple of days, and he's already gotten very attached to me. Uh, he follows me around the house everywhere I go. He will not let me alone one minute, which I'm okay with. He must be on the couch with me if I'm on the couch. Uh, he spends all night in the bed with me. Uh, he's already figured out how to get out through the pet door. Uh, and actually yesterday I went to work and about an hour after I got to work, I got a call from my neighbor across the street. He had gotten out of the house and out of the yard and was wound up across the street and they grabbed him my mom had to go get him and keep him with her for the day so <laughs> he's really really smart uh i told him i taught him to go in his bed one time i said go to your bed and then i put him in his bed since then i say go to your bed and he goes right to his bed it's amazing very smart little guy uh and he's great in the car loves to go for car rides i'm very optimistic that he's gonna love riding in the queen and uh, i was worried about how frank would react but Frank doesn't seem to care that much. He was a little bit nervous at first, and now he just, whatever. That's kind of the attitude he has about it right now. Um, I think eventually they're gonna get comfortable with each other, and I think they're gonna be buddies. They're already sort of sniffing and checking each other out and working out their, their boundaries, I guess you could say. So it's gonna be an interesting few weeks. Uh, he is, as I said, very smart. Uh, but he needs some training. He's very good on a leash, but he's not too good with manners yet. He's very excitable, and, and needs, I need to teach him how to calm down. I need to teach him how to relax and, uh, and you know, sit and stay and that kind of thing and, and come when he's called, that kind of thing. He needs some training. So, uh, But given how smart he is, I don't think that's going to be a problem. <laughs> I think he's just absolutely adorable. Little teddy bear face. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put him down. I'm going to go ahead and answer your questions. Okay. Nope, calm down. There you go. Okay, he's just going to be sitting right there. He's real good. He doesn't try to get away or anything. In fact, uh, I probably wouldn't even have to have him on a leash, really. He'd probably just stay right here with me, but I don't want to take that chance. All right, so anyway, here are the questions that I've written down. Uh... Considering how small the channel is, I didn't expect a whole lot of questions. Uh, this is pretty much exactly what I expected, just really a handful uh, of questions. So I'm going to go ahead and just, just answer these, go down the list. Let's see, question number one, do you have any siblings? Uh, yes, I do. I have an older sister, four years older than I am, uh, and she's married, she's got a couple of kids, uh, lives just a block away from my folks, so we're all within a few blocks of each other. Uh, and I've also got a younger brother who's, I think, six years younger than I? Something like that. He was adopted from Guatemala. We got him when he was three months old. Uh, so he's actually, you look at him, you wouldn't know he's my brother. But uh, yeah, we've, we've had him basically his whole life. Uh, he still lives with my folks. Uh, they're working on getting him out of the house. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, let's see. What kind of work do you do? 
I'm a truck driver. Uh, I think I've mentioned that a couple of times, but uh, yeah, I, I drive a semi. Now the next question is what company do I drive for? Uh, I actually don't drive for a trucking company. I actually drive for a medical imaging company called Alliance Healthcare. Uh, they specialize in mobile MRI and PET CT scanners. And my job is to transport these machines from one hospital to the next. Uh, they actually the entire trailer is a is a scanner you basically you pull up to the hospital and each hospital has a, a pad that you park the trailer on and then a, an, a curtain that inflates and connects the hospital to the trailer so the patients can be brought on and off the trailer without ever going outside it's really quite a sleek system these trailers are anywhere from three to five million dollars a piece and Michigan law says you have to have what's called a certificate of need in order to buy an MRI uh, and a lot of hospitals simply can't afford it or they don't have enough patience to uh, justify the purchase basically so a lot of a lot of hospitals will hire us to bring a trailer in there once or twice a week they'll get all their patients scanned and then they'll just wait a week for the next trailer to come in uh, it's really quite a nice uh, nice system saves people a lot of money and it, it prevents from prevents people from having to travel great distances or wait weeks on end for a for an MRI. It's really quite nice. So that's what I do. Uh, it it's an interesting trucking job to say the least. In fact, I'm planning to make a video of me doing that job. I've already gotten clearance from my, from my manager to go ahead and and uh, record my shelf, myself on one of my shifts moving those trailers around. I'm really just waiting for the right time. I gotta wait for a, a day when I have a a short night because. Filming, I assume, will add at least an hour to my night. So if I'm running a 12-hour night as it is, that's obviously not a good time to be filming. Okay, anyway, um, next question is, let's see. Next question is, how did you find the queen? Uh, I actually found the queen on Craigslist. I was just searching randomly and um, uh, searching camper vans and that kind of thing. At the time, I was looking for a camper van, but I didn't really want to spend a lot of money two to three thousand dollars I figured I'd buy an older one and just keep it nice and that kind of thing uh, didn't have very high expectations and then the problem was I really really wanted one that had overdrive because a three-speed transmission very much limits you on how fast you can drive and uh, it reduces the the lifespan of the engine and that kind of thing so I was really looking for an overdrive and you really can't get those until you get into the early 90s. The late 80s, nobody really had them. They started putting them in there reliably in the early 90s. Um, and so I was looking in this very narrow window of vans that had overdrive that I could afford. And they were kind of few and far between. So I started looking further and further away from Michigan. Next thing you know, I'm looking in Maryland. And all of a sudden, up pops this 96 Explorer. And it was listed at, I think he asked $3,500. I said, wait a second, $3,500 for a 96, that doesn't make sense. Uh, and I started looking at it and, and I started researching and found out that it had been sitting there for a long time and it had something wrong with the engine. He didn't really know what it was. Uh, and I could tell that it was a bit of a risk to buy such a thing. But I told him, I told him basically my situation. I said, I'm up in Michigan. I can't look at the thing. Who knows what's wrong with that engine? I'm willing to buy it, but not at 3,500. I told him I'll give you two grand. That's the best I can do. And amazingly, he accepted that because he was moving. He was moving to Colorado or something. I just needed to unload the thing. Uh, so two thousand dollars, and then I had a. I called a local towing company to take it over to a mechanic, have a mechanic look at the engine. Uh, and the mechanic said, "Well, we took a look, and you need a new engine." I said, why do I need a new engine? He said, well, you got a bent valve. I said, why would a bent valve need a new engine? He just said, well, because that's just the way it is. It was very strange. He wouldn't give me any information as to why he came to the conclusion from bent valve to new engine. It was like he didn't want to even try to fix the engine. He said something about liability. He said he can't fix the engine because if he tries to fix it and then something goes wrong, he's liable. I don't know, maybe the laws in Maryland are strange. I've never heard of something like that from a mechanic in Michigan mechanic in Michigan if you want it fixed he'll fix it he doesn't care so that was weird the mechanic wouldn't do anything other than put a new engine in and he wanted about three thousand dollars to put in a new engine I told him that was never gonna happen so I found a moving company that managed to get the van up here for about 800 bucks which was incredible because I was getting quoted thousands of dollars by other companies uh, in my very first video you see the van coming in on the trailer uh, 
and from there it's really everything after that was recorded so it's all uh, it's all on record it obviously took a lot more time a lot more money than I ever expected it to take but I think I'm happy with what I came up with uh, I got a, a okay I got a front-end loader on my street so give me a second okay they're doing some work down the street so we're just gonna have to live with any noise they may produce all right so that's how I found the Queen everything after the point of arrival is uh, been recorded so you can just go back and watch and uh, find out what happened afterward uh, let's see what is the most reporting part most rewarding part of fixing up the Queen most rewarding part has got to be just having it to go places and being able to do things that I wouldn't have been otherwise able to do for example the other day at the fireworks uh, at the park my dad and I spent all day just sitting under the awning and relaxing we got there way way before the fireworks ever started something like eight hours before the fireworks started and we were very comfortable uh, because of the Queen if we had been there in a car it wouldn't have been nearly as comfortable uh, RVs provide you a, a capability of doing things in a comfortable way that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do uh, and being able to tell people that look at this thing they see African Queen and it's happened more than once I see African Queen and they are confused and they have questions and then I can sit there and talk to them and tell them everything I've done uh, and as well as making this 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 channel this channel has been incredibly rewarding uh, despite being really just a very small following at this point it's been really rewarding to be able to talk to people and ha get the feedback from folks uh, my Facebook page I have a lot of fun with uh, chatting with people on there and quite honestly I'm not entirely sure I want this channel to ever get as big as say uh, Eric Jacobs uh, nomadic fanatic you know, with over a hundred thousand followers right now I've got a little over 900 because if it gets that big you get to the point where you can't really converse with your followers uh, so many people are trying to talk to you and get a piece of you that you can't really uh, make that connection like I can right now. I pretty much respond to anybody who messages me. I respond to it. Uh, can't do that when you have hundreds of thousands of followers. So uh, that's why I'm not in a huge hurry to grow this channel. I don't pay for advertising. I don't pay to promote the channel. Uh, I don't really go out of my way to talk to other YouTubers and try to get them to promote my channel. I, I don't do that because I kind of enjoy having it small. So anyway, that's really the most rewarding thing, just being able to talk to people and all the people that I've, I've basically met because of uh, this experience. Uh, let's see, next question is, how do your parents feel since you first got her until now? I think what you mean is, how did they feel when I first got her and how do they feel now? Uh, when I first got her, everybody thought I was crazy. Everybody looked at this run-down, dirty, filthy, stinky van and said what the hell are you doing I even had a guy at the mechanic shop while it was in there uh, I was over there talking to the mechanic for a second and the guy walked in and said is this your van I go yep he says oh big mistake turns and walks away I said yeah okay I didn't ask for your opinion but whatever this was of course during the time when I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do with the engine and I was already having doubts thinking I had made a mistake and that kind of thing just doesn't doesn't help the situation but I just you gotta brush off that kind of thing uh, and my parents were very supportive very positive because that's just the na that's their nature they always try to be supportive uh, unless you're doing something that's seriously dangerous or reckless they're pretty much just gonna support you uh, but as time went on they actually started to really get into it and it inspired them to buy their RV that they have now the princess the big class C uh, they had a crappy 1983 uh, Shasta before that, and it was unusable at, the, at that point. By the time I got this thing, their Shasta was unusable. Nothing inside worked anymore. The engine was pretty much the only thing that still worked, and uh, my, they were thinking of getting rid of it. They just couldn't decide if they wanted to just get rid of it and have nothing, or if they actually wanted to replace it. My dad had big doubts about whether or not he wanted to replace an RV, whether or not they'd actually use it. And then when he saw me fixing up this and I was talking about everything I was going to go do, he started to think, yeah, we ought to buy one. And sure as shit, that's what exactly what they did. They bought that big one and they've had a lot of fun. They've used theirs more than I've used mine. And we've gone places together and they absolutely love it. So uh, things are great right now. The African Queen has given us uh, a whole new hobby 
a whole new uh, list of activities for me to do with my family that I we otherwise wouldn't be doing. So that's another rewarding part about having the African Queen. She's actually sort of brought me and my family back together in a way that we weren't before. I mean, we were always close, but now we actually have activities that we enjoy going and doing together rather than just sitting around watching TV. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's see, what's the next one? Um, what do you use to film while driving? Uh, that question was actually a little more complicated. I trimmed it down. Uh, basically what I use, I use my GoPro Hero 4 anytime I'm filming myself. And I'm, when I'm driving, I set it up on the dashboard. I got a little sticky mount that it sits, sits on and attaches to to record me. And then I've got my old GoPro Hero 3 uh, on a suction cup mount pointing out the windshield. And I basically just overlay the videos together uh, using the editing software. So I just use a couple of GoPros. And that's my, m the entirety of my filming equipment, plus the obviously the gimbal stabilizer, which isn't working right now, and uh, my audio recording equipment. Uh, very simple. I don't I don't go too overboard with uh, camera equipment because this is such a simple channel. This I'm I am not Discovery Channel. I'm just Ramblin' Michigander. I'm just doing this for fun, so I keep it very casual. Uh, let's see. Will you ever go over the bridge? I assume they mean Mackinac Bridge, which separates the uh, northern and southern peninsulas of Michigan. And the answer is absolutely. I absolutely will go over the Mackinac Bridge and into the UP. There's a lot of great stuff to see up there. And I've actually never really been there. We crossed the bridge once when I was a kid just for fun of it. We were up in Mackinac, and we just said, hey, let's go over the bridge. So we drove over the bridge, immediately turned around and drove back. That's my, the extent of my time in the UP. So maybe not this year. In fact, probably not this year. But definitely next year I will be going to the UP, crossing over the bridge. But we are going up to, to Mackinac uh, later this year. I think in September we're going to go out to Mackinac. Uh, let's see. Is Frank a Red Point Siamese? No, he's not. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what he is. I'm pretty sure it's American short hair. I think that's the term for it. Um, never really given it much thought, to be honest with you. He's always just been a white cat. We've had white cats in my family since I was born. Uh, yeah, I think it's American short hair is the term, but yeah, that, that's what he is. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. That's all the questions I got. Oh, nope, I missed one. Here we go. Do you do any kind of cooking in the van? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I do occasionally use the stove for various things, but it creates such a mess. Washing pots and pans in that tiny little sink is very inconvenient. So I don't do it too much. Uh, I use the microwave for a lot of things, and I like to eat out. That's the other thing. When I'm, when I'm on the road, when I'm in new places, I like to try the local cuisine. So I eat in r local restaurants most of the time. Uh, or I cook over the fire. If I'm at a campground, I'll cook over the fire hot dogs and burgers and stuff. So I do cook in the van, but only when I really don't have any other option. So, uh, okay, that's all the questions. Uh, I hope you folks enjoyed it. Uh, we will be seeing a lot more of uh, Sumo here. Come here, Sumo. I want to see you one more time. I know. Come here. No, no, no. Come here. Come here. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so, Sumo and I will be seeing you all. And uh, actually, in a couple of days, we're going to be heading down to Ohio and a uh, special little treat for us down there. That will be my next video. And Sumo, of course, will be going along, won't you? Okay, I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you all enjoyed Sumo. Uh, don't worry, I will be continuing to uh, put Frank on camera as much as I can. Anytime I'm recording here at the house, I'll try to put him on. Uh, and as well, if you want to see more pictures of him, you of course follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash ramblinmichigander. I post a lot of pictures there of Frank and, and now Sumo as well, and a lot of updates and information that uh, happened between videos. So uh, make sure to go there and check us out, follow along, and we will be seeing you later.